We first went to the mission field in 1962. They felt that when we as missionaries came there, that we brought things with us for them. These are our things. We need these things to live, and they're taking them all. One time, a man tried to sell me one, and I grabbed it out of his hand. I said, You're not, I'm not gonna pay you for it. You know that this is my pineapple. And the Lord got on me and said to me, Otto, how are you gonna win him? My wife and I had together bowed our heads to God and said, God, it's all yours. And then God starts to move. When it comes to the things we personally possess, like our money, our house, our yard, our car, etc., we generally have certain expectations regarding how each of them are used. And if anybody encroaches on those expectations in any way, what happens next? Usually, some level of reaction ensues. Hey, that's mine, we might say. Leave that alone. Now, it's right and responsible for us to take good care of the things we own, but it's an entirely different matter when those things begin to own us. Such was the case of a missionary who served in the jungles of New Guinea. We first went to the mission field in 1962, in the fall of the year, and we went to the Aoyu tribe on the southern swamplands of New Guinea. And uh, that's where we planted the pineapple garden. We heard that they did good there, and so we planted them all in nice straight rows, and I had the natives help me do that, but they took three years to grow. We'd gone to on furlough, come back, and then after, after we came back, there were the pineapples starting to grow. But they never did turn yellow. The natives took them all. They felt that when we as missionaries came there, that we brought things with us for them. So as far as they were concerned, we didn't own a thing. We came to live with the privilege of living with them. These are our things. We need these things to live and they're taking them all. And so they ran off with my pineapples. That whole crop, that whole first year, I never got one. I don't even know what my pineapples taste like, you know. I prayed about it, I said, God, uh, I appreciate that missionary gave me these plants, but I'd sure like to have one. And so one time, a man tried to sell me one and I grabbed it out of his hand. I said, You're not, I'm not gonna pay you for it. You know that this is my pineapple. I said, just go. And the Lord got on me and said to me, Otto, how are you gonna win him? Are you here to eat pineapples or are you here to win people to Christ? I'm known now as a, a missionary. They tell me what's the definition of missionary to other people and they say, well, he's one that comes with a box. He gathers his stuff. The main thing about him is his stuff. If we reach the point where our behavior is dictated by our possessions and what happens to them, it is a sign that we've lost sight of eternity and become consumed by the temporary. The Bible warns against this in multiple places, such as in Matthew 6, where it says to not lay up treasures on earth, and in 1 Timothy 6, where it tells us of the problems that accompany the pursuit of riches. Living by a materialistic, temporal value system not only causes us to eventually lose what we possess, it also robs us of the things that matter now, where we forfeit the treasures that last for eternity. This is what the missionary Otto Koenig realized he was doing when he began to prioritize his pineapple garden over the people on the mission field. But what are we supposed to do when people meddle with our things? What does God desire of us when we become frustrated by these situations? When I was struggling, my furlough came due. And so it was good to get out of there for a while and to uh, go home. And my mission board told me to go to a seminar that was uh, uh, being held. And so that's where I went. And at that seminar, they were talking about yielding rights and giving your possessions to God and letting God be Lord of all. All I could think of was, 
Oh, man, I, how I've messed up. I fought for my rights and, and now I should be yielding my rights and surrendering to God. And I was so convicted and I was weeping at the seminar. I told my wife, we've got to give that garden to God. And so that's when we came back to the mission field. And that's what we did. That's when we gave the garden to God. My wife and I had together bowed our heads to God and said, God, it's all yours. And then God starts to move. And this is what happened. The pressure went on and they got sick and the fish wouldn't bite. And they came to us and they stood. They said, Tuan, everything is wrong in this village. The rain won't fall, the gardens won't grow. We're hungry. I said, well, God must not be happy with something you're doing. He said, Tuan, is your God really so powerful? Is he, is he so big that he can keep our garden, the rain from falling, and he can keep the fish from biting from our hooks. I said, you're dealing with a big God. And when you touch his stuff, he can withdraw the rain. That tribe turned to the Lord after that, when they recognized how big God was. Whenever we prioritize our own possessions over God and what he values, we detach ourselves from the incredible things He wanted to do through us. But if we surrender our earthly possessions to God and become willing stewards of what He wants done with those possessions, He's able to manifest His glorious reality through them. So the question we want to consider is, what do we personally have that we're withholding from God? And what would happen if we sincerely surrendered it to Him? When we yield our possessions to God and seek His will in the process, the doorway opens for God to accomplish a miraculous, transformational work through us. I remember sitting in the field while I was down and wiping my brow, it was hot. And I said, God, you see what I'm doing? Before I couldn't even get one pineapple. And now I'm just giving it away by the scores, by the loads. To the, I'm feeding all my people. And now my people are turning to you and now you're giving them fish to eat and you're blessing them and they're realizing it. And the church was built, you can imagine. The church was built and the villages were growing bigger. People were living longer. God takes care. When we give, He gives. And so that is the message of ownership. That's the message of surrendering your rights. That's what I learned in the pineapple story.